What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the right side of the map in the blue color playing as Loki. His name is Joe. His opponent today in the red color playing as Thor. His name is Super Spicy One. This is game number two, the best of five between Super and Joe for the round of 16. Round of 16? Round of 16 for the competitive mega random tournament. Yes. Yes. Hey, what a time to be alive would be an understatement because we've got the Egyptian expert, Joe, coming in and going to be showing us a little bit of that Loki shenanigans that we know and love. For those of you who are uninitiated, for those of the uninitiated, the, if you are not aware. Joe is actually more than just an Egyptian main. When he plays in RTSL for Deities of Death, the Dodd clan, he's known to be picking Loki, he's known to be picking Zeus, he's known to be picking all the Egyptian gods. He'll play some Odin if he needs to. He'll he'll play some Poseidon if he needs to. He can play all the gods at incredibly high level. Uh, and and that's just that's just how that's just how the cookie crumbles when it comes down to it. He's an incredibly strong random god player who excels with the Egyptians, which is why you see him playing Egyptians along the tournament. When the tournament calls for you to play a whole bunch of different gods, then a whole bunch of different gods will be played. Soup, on the other hand, the resident Norse expert in the land known as uh, Europe. From Europe, hails from the place with... Spicy hot soup, pumpkin soup even. Yes, he's gonna come show us actually how it's done. Thor versus Loki. I love this matchup. I think this matchup is very, very balanced. And I think it's so balanced in fact that you just don't know what's gonna happen. The idea is that Thor and Loki, that Thor's got a very, very simple game plan and Loki has got a very, very simple game plan, but both game plans are incredibly complex to execute. Any little slip up in the process can give your opponent enough of an edge to get a victory. So let's talk a little bit about what Loki's plans are. So there's two to start with. So you have your flowchart, which way you want to go. So one flowchart ends pretty early, which is Heimdall Rush. The idea is I want to get to a point where I've got four, five, six iron here, tons of Hersa throwing Axemen, and just go for the jugular, go for gold styles, go for all the good stuff. You put lots of pressure on early. That's Heimdall. There's not really a follow-up to Heimdall. If you can't get the pressure done, oftentimes you just fall to Skadi, uh, but that is the way of Heimdall. Other option, other option is Force Eddie. And this is the one which is just like, okay, here's the flow chart against Thor. Flow chart number one, Hursa raids. If you can get enough villager kills, you win. So look for villager kills, look for army kills, all that good stuff. If you don't hit that, then you need to hit the heroic age before your opponent. And if you do, you can class flaming weapons and force a defensive uh, potential frost, or at least get the flame weapons off before Skadi comes in, and you get an advantage there. If your opponent does hit Skadi before you, then you need to hold on to your flaming weapons, keep running around, keep causing chaos, get to the Mythic Age through uh, through Hell, and get your Town Center and prepare for the Ragnarok. Uh, that is that's the gist. And if you can, uh, and that's what you have to do now. There are many different situations that might end up unfurling as we are seeing one of them happening right now where the Thor player might decide, hey, let's just get aggressive here as Soup is already in the Classical Age. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 3 minutes 55 seconds into the game. He's already in the Classical Age. Hursa going to be moving forward. Troll going to be moving forward. The Hursa does greet Joe's Hursa. He's going to be pulling that one back immediately here as the uh, gold mine is completely exposed here with Soup's Troll wandering forward. And this is the Soup we know and love. Incredibly aggressive. Ridiculously prepared in the Norse matchup. And he's been... He's played so many Norse mirrors. He's got such a, a ridiculously strong understanding of this matchup as Joe's been pushed off his home gold mine at 4 minutes 25 seconds into the game because of this troll. Now, we see a longhouse coming down. The Hursa are going to be moving forward. 
Soup's going to be attempting to micro to the best of his ability. There's a troll out now for Joe, though. So that's going to be a little bit of a difficult one to deal with as the unit's going to be moving forward, hitting that dwarf, getting a couple of extra hits in. We are seeing the troll going to be trying to throw his own rocks at the enemy troll, but it does look like uh, it does look like Soup's winning this fight here as, as just a slight advantage here for Soup. I mean, as you will be seeing the troll retreating away. One more rock does miss there. Might be seeing a, uh, a cheeky... Cheeky Healing Spring getting dropped, which does get thrown down here as the Hursa are going to be fighting here. One Hursa going to be going down for Soup very, very shortly. One HP going to be attempting to retreat away. There's another one over here that needs to be pulled back. And it does look like no uh, no units falling just yet, but Soup on the back foot as he's going to be dropping another Longhouse down. Might be wanting to throw his Healing Spring down, which he does do. Uh, this low HP Hursa is going to be very, very happy to be close to that Healing Spring. So too, uh, Joe's Hursa going to be very, very happy. Look at the favor differential right now. Soup's got just that one favor more than Joe, so he's done just a tiny little bit more damage than uh, than Joe has in this game with his human units. So we'll see how it's all gonna go here. It might not even be a tiny bit of damage because it's more Hursa for for Soup out right now. It's very just very very close. But Soup's got so much more population than Joe right now. 47 to 53, and this is because he's advanced faster. So Joe's going to be a little bit careful right now. Doesn't want to get too high progressive. We are seeing villagers now moving over onto this wood over here as well, having a little bit of a scouting sh shenanigans going on. Seems to be another sort of low hunt map. Finding the Harmonia's Necklace in the corner. There, there's there's probably hunt somewhere on this map. I'm not 100% sure where. Looks just like there's some berry bushes over here. Bunch of a goat in the main base, but in reality here, Soup can basically just spam out uh, throwing Axeman and have a fine time against the infantry-based army of Joe, as Joe's not going to be getting himself uh, Hall of Fanes anytime soon. We are going to be seeing the fight ensuing here. Trolls right now, a little bit of a differential in that HP of about 60, so a little bit of advantage for Soup where that's concerned in this fight. So we'll see if that's going to uh, come in his favor or not. Now, we do have to remember, Loki does have Myth Unit spawning technology here, as he's also trained a second troll as the uh, longhouse getting targeted down, continuously trying to push in, pull out, getting a little bits of chip damage here and there as Soup knows he probably doesn't really want to fight here, but he is going for it. As the Hursa coming forward, a handful of throwing Axemen out for both players as we see a Valkyrie spawn here for Joe. Going to be a really, really big help as we are seeing the Hursa pushing in onto the enemy trolls over here. Units falling for Soup pretty fast, but it does look like trolls going down and potentially those Hursa are going to be falling as well. Nice micro from Soup to be targeting down the enemy Hursa first. Only one uh, Valkyrie left over here as it's going to be going down to the troll as well as it's just about to fall. It does go down 4 HP. Ein here does spawn over here, but there are two Hursa already through on this location. The throwing Axeman turn around going to be targeting down that Hursa and Joe has dropped down to 41 population here as the, the raiding cavalry do manage to push through and basically carry this fight in a big way against the enemy throwing Axeman. All the Hursa falling. No myth units. Well, only two myth units spawns in that fight, but Joe not being enough to help him. The final Hursa might be going down fairly soon, but right now with the trolls that could be coming through for soup, it's going to be a difficult time. We see the, uh, the dwarves getting pulled off here. Dwarves very, very good at killing off throwing axemen, so we'll see uh, if they're going to be able to get that damage done or not, but with the help of those uh, those trolls here, they're going to do so much damage to the dwarves as well, as we see a Hursa going down. The dwarves are trying to take down these raining cavalry. Nice micro from soup, though. He's not going to be slowing down here at all as Joe has to tap out in eight minutes in classic soup fashion. He manages to to just win a game in under 10 minutes. I, I want to tell you about my history with soup. Whenever I watch soup games, live that is, we are watching his recorder game now, but whenever I watch soup's games, if, if the game goes over 10 minutes, it's a cracker of a game. The, the, his games are always insane, but... Most of the time, they go, they're go they under 10 minutes. And it's either lo lose hard or win hard. There's no in-between <laughs> with Soup. Uh, but a funny game, nonetheless. A, a really, really nice demonstration here of the power of early game Thor uh, that comes from casting that early game Dwarven mine. Um, and, I mean, I, I do I do feel that, that uh, the advantage you gain from that early Dwarven gold mine can get 
overcome here by a strong Loki player. I think that the micro was a bit of an issue here in this fight from from Joe. If you might get a little bit better, maybe if you got out some uh, some different units instead of just straight her, so throwing Axeman. Could have been a little bit different position here, especially because he didn't have himself Hall of Fanes. So Hursa are great and all, but if you if you don't have Hall of Fanes, they kind of lose a lot of that value. Uh, anyway, if you guys enjoyed this game, which I did, uh, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next game.